while waiting and trying to get the car out, we had a couple of cars actually smash into the car. I think about three or four cars and hence the uh, damage that you see over here. This is stage five. At 23.2 kilometers, the longest stage of the rally and also the prettiest. Like all other forest and plantation roads, it had its fair share of rough spots, but in general, the roads were smooth, fast and flowing, while it snatched its way through the beautiful Brooklyn forest between Rosor and Sarbis. Stage 5 was also the last gravel stage of day 1, and an opportunity for the drivers to make a move up, or in some cases, down the beautiful road. Jalpin van Inkerk and Robin Houten got over their puncture problems from early on in the day and recorded the 10th fastest time in the Castle Kyoto running. The Castle of Koenig and Otto Subaru of Saul Wilson and Jake Godrich reached the end of stage 5 without any trouble and with the 8th fastest time. 7th on the stage was the perfect Subaru of Fischer de Cassie and Harald Neymar. Unfortunately, we went off the night a couple of times and we hit the right 8 during in front and uh, we made it. But he has apologized. I think we've got an excellent time. After the previous rally in Cape Town, Ein Latergan and Johan van der Merwe swapped their turbo diesel golf for a Steve's Auto Clinic Subaru Impressor and impressed everyone by setting the sixth fastest stage time on stage five. Pfeiffer and Harding impressed even more with everything to gain. The Cape Townian drove brilliantly, fourth on stage five, comfortably leading the production cars and lying third overall. It's just all the way down the hills, and so you've got to be very careful that you don't overshoot any of the corners. So it's quite easy. Went on dry tires, I think it was the right choice. Nicholas Ryan and Scott van Hede made the piece of the day's last gravel stage and drove hard to record the fourth fastest time in the Philips Kyoto running. My left rear wheel line was out and we didn't have time in the last service to fix it. And uh, so every, every one of the right corners, it didn't work out on the left, so not good. But yeah, yeah. it looks like JP had a bit of drama. Yeah, JP had two functions. With all these stages so far, Fekin and Aris were fast and spectacular, yet safe and keeping the DP Ultimate Polo in the middle of the road, but not sticking their necks up. His time on this 23 kilometer stage, 14 minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, we took it a bit slow. Um, uh, didn't want to take any risks. Thanks to a series of punctures and consequent damage to the DP Polo, Abi Khanjad had no chance of interfering with the podium place driver. But the champions never surrender, and with not much more to lose, Habich gave the crowd something to cheer about with his spectacular driving and second fastest stage time. The talented John Williams is a newcomer to the top class of rally and gaining experience fast. But for now, there's still a difference between gaining experience and having loads of it. Remember, Habich is a six times champion. Let's see the difference. Left three over thread. Left three into crest. Habe finishes the stage in a time of 14 minutes and 42 seconds while Williams struggled with his rhythm. It took him 55 seconds longer to complete this 23 kilometer stage. We normally call Hergen the flying Fekin, but it was teammate Enzo Keen who did most of the flying on the first day of the Sassel. Keen and Hodgson completed the same stage in a time of 14 minutes and 34 seconds stretching his lead by another 21 seconds in the process. Yeah, we went on dry tires now. So, no change at the top, with Keen still leading teammate Pekin, but now with a comfortable 45 seconds, Pfeiffer managed to race past the two Kyotas of Damson and Ryan to be in third. Five S2000 and five production in four pulled the top ten while putting up a great show for the thousands of spectators. You don't have to be a big bully to appreciate the spectacle of a top class rally car going in full flight. Sideways, throwing up stones, that's why you have thousands of spectators. For millions of enthusiasts around the world, rallying is the ultimate form of all motorsport. It's a fantastic spectacle, and nowhere else in South Africa is it so pronounced than on a Sassel rally. The prospect of seeing this type of action, and that in a beautiful forest of Mpumalanga, is attracting thousands of spectators each year. So for the sponsors and the organizers, seeing so many people next to the stages is a wonderful sight. But uh, it presents a whole new set of problems. Remember, motorsport is dangerous. 
wide racing circuit, there are no safety barriers or runoff areas on the rally stages. Only trees, and especially on the saddle, thousands of spectators. Sometimes even within striking distance. You don't, you don't see the faces, you just see the people. Um, in these very tight stages, it's very easy to overshoot and then you'll take with you 30 or 40 of them. So that would be a problem. But uh, we've had moments, but we, you know, the Carlos Sainz, my countryman, has had bigger moments than me. Spectators has always, have always been a problem, and the Tesla especially. Um, I have had some close encounters. One of the photographers, Dave Lippert, I almost killed one. Yeah, look, the spectators on this event is really tricky. And the guys don't realize what sort of pace cars are traveling at. And it's very difficult, especially on the car stage. You know, you start off with cold tires, pull straight out of the block. Um, it takes like a couple of meters before they start warming up. So the car is understeering quite badly. The brakes aren't great. And yeah, if I, I mean, if I knew, as a spectator, if I knew what I know, I'd be careful. <laughs> So it's up to the organizing club and these guys, the crowd control marshals, to ensure that spectators stay safe. Each spectator spot is chosen in advance, with the aim of providing the fans with a good view of the action, but to keep them out of the firing line at the same time. Rally drivers are good, but accidents still happen, so spectators should always stay clear from especially the outside corners. But safety is only part of the whole spectating experience. People want to get close to the action and have fun in the process. So good spectators also a clever one. Yeah, we go around, see the world, um, follow the cars, and cheer the people. Yeah, I'm all the way from, from, from Bethlehem, just to come and see the stuff over here. Uh, we usually uh, some braai and boars, and uh, usually something warm is called this time of the year in Sabi. And uh, normally we follow the program to see where the races and the stages are. So the next time you join us on a round of the Sassel South African Rally Championship, please remember to plan your spectators. Allow enough travelling time to get your spectator points as listed in the program and obey the rules of the road at all times. The future of our sport depends on this. But back to the action on the stages where the drivers have their own set of rules. And that is to be faster than the next guy. Behind the leading drivers and teams, the action further down the field was just as fast and serious. 46 out of these 66 starters survived the Sassel's first five gravel or muddy stages. Team, Beckham and Amso were leading the top Super 2000 class. In the production car category, it was Pfeiffer, Wilkins and Duplessis in class in four. Behind them, there were some great performances by Richard and Natasha Vaughan and their Mitsubishi Lancer. This Hudson and White team already has a bag of championship points. And another solid finish will go a long way in making things even more difficult for the other teams. Just missing out on a top 10 position at this stage of the event was the Finnish Stassen brothers, Jürs and Dani. The Nelspade locals made good use of their local knowledge to set some competitive stage times in a class in for Subaru and Pesel. Or maybe it has something to do with this little guy who looks over his shoulder. Another pairing to have swapped horses is the Verlach sisters. After driving a total evolution Subaru and Pesel for a number of years, Lola and Megan decided it was time for a change and now competes in the Mitsubishi Lancer. With the demise of Gugu Zulu early on, Team Total stalwarts Christopher and Dean Redlinghuis were gaining for their second consecutive victory in the top two-wheel drive class A7. Having only the front wheel to drag you through the mud was challenging to say the least, but the vet has experience and an alien, that's what counts. Adrian Kraft and Richard Swiri were lying second in class in their neck to neck Volkswagen Polo. A Rift Natal class winners and members of the Rally Star Squad Kian Chubad and Henny Bertis in a similar Salon Group sponsored machine. And here's a battle royale. Class A6 is for front wheel drive cars with modified engines smaller than 2 litres. It is also the home of Craig Trot and driver turn navigator Tony Ball and their team total running. But this time, Trot has the team total Corolla of Mohammed Musa and Grant Martin to contend with. Musa has been knocking on a class winning door since he moved to class A6 this year. And after the day's five stages, he was getting closer and closer. He was only 26 seconds in front of Trot, in spite of the few scary moments earlier on in the day. While Trot and Musa had to fight with each other, they also had to keep an eye on the Panos sponsored DW pilot of Stefan Walken and Duhelen Kuri. Wilson was only a minute from joining this battle. Class A5, the training ground for future stars and a place where Taz's, City Golf's and Yaris's do battle. Also the domain of Andre Kienberg and Des Deportier, who have won every round so far in their BP Ultimate BW City Golf. Kienberg was again setting the pace on the saddle. He was the head of the Kyoto Taz of Charles Conradi and Kian Robert. Dave Compton and Paul Leslie had the added pressure of driving a saddle back car on the saddle rally. But the track racing driver, Andy Jarris, was driving well and within striking distance. 
In class N3, for near standard production cars up to 2 litres, sport racing fans were hoping for a maiden class victory and had reason to smile at this stage of the event. Etienne Lawrence, with the daughter of former rally great Tassi Kutsia, Alvin in the hot seat, was leading the class behind the wheel of the Ford Fiesta ST. They were followed by the previous class winners, Rodney Versach and Kevin Swan, in the Team Total Toyota Runnings, ahead of the similar Sassel Runnings of stun driver Etienne de Toure and Patrick Fromar. As in Atoll and Cape Town, Class N2 was again a lonely affair with the husband and wife team of Rian and Hesri Erasmus, the only entry. With five gravel stages under the belt, night started to fall in Sabi and the team started preparation for a whole new team. Thousands of people lining the streets.